Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sunday's Illusion of Gaia. We're gonna continue to get a little weird. Before we head off to the next location on the map, we actually need to do something about these red gems of ours. So we collected three of them last time. Every time you collect gems, you can send them away to this fabled gem, the jeweler, who actually is a person in every location you go to, for the most part. They will have a different appearance every single time that you go to a place, and so because of that, you need to actually hunt them out a little bit. And it's not in every location, but it's in most of the locations, we'll say that. And you can send the jewels off to gem, and when you do that, you do get an item, a power up, some sort of bonus. So in South Cape, this is the gem of sorts. You can give him your jewels. Gem wants to play with your jewels. He will hold your jewels, and then in return, you will get a prize. So in res in return for letting Gem play with your jewels, you get herbs. So just just think about that for a second. Just wanted to. Just wanted to see Jemmy. You can send him off at any time. It doesn't have to necessarily be when you're right next to him, but I'm probably just going to hand him off once I get them. Makes sense. But anyway, now that we're done with that, we can go and see if we can catch up with Kara as she was mercilessly dragged back to her home in Edward's castle. Kind of feels a little bit like Chrono Trigger with uh, Marl, Marley. I want to say, I mean, I know that people have say it's Marl, but that's not a name. I want to say Marley. Spoilers. Okay, so now we are in Edward's castle. We've finally made it back. I'm not sure exactly how we think that we um, belong here, but we do have that ring that the king specifically asked for. And we do have a letter. So we have our acceptance letter. We can go to college now. We are the guest of the king. So yeah, fellas, how about we back off, okay? Maybe you don't know where you're going. We will head up to the second floor eventually. But King Edward is having some steak and eggs, a little breakfast, if you know what I'm saying. There is, of course, more red gems in this area, and it's very easy to miss some of them. I want to say that there is one right here. So behind this pillar, I don't know how they expect you to know that this is a thing, but uh, you can get a red jewel there. That's the only red jewel that's physically in this part of the castle. So if you find this one, then you've got all of them. You can come in here and see servants, which is great. Oh, a hunter was hired. I wonder what the king was thinking. Well, maybe he wants to get murdered by a boar and then send his kingdom into calamity. That's not a reference to anything. Okay. So that's the stairs up. This is the stairs down. I thought at one point... Just check everything. I don't know. It's a really big habit of me to do this anyway. Like I always check every barrel and nook and cranny when I'm trying to find what I'm looking for. This is the underground prison. Innocent people. Well, we're innocent for now. Ooh. Ooh. We'll find out what happens going forward. Things are getting a little ominous. Everybody seems to be giving us these strange warnings that the king is maybe not who he thinks that he is. Okay, nothing worse than having somebody drop the L-bomb on you and you're not ready for it, so... Good luck. But yeah, here's this nice, uh, repeated pattern. Looks a little bit better when you run, I guess. The power of the Super Nintendo in all its majesty. Look at that. I feel like they could have done more with that. Chrono Trigger does a nice job with some backgrounds. That's kind of like the ultimate Super Nintendo RPG in my opinion. And I think that they do a lot better job with backgrounds and scenery. I mean, this is just, this isn't a, a bad RPG illusion of guy. It's kind of like a B tier one compared to that, but it's kind of hard to compare anything to that. That's like trying to compare, you know, a, a piece of bologna to a filet mignon steak. You don't want to do that. So this is the princess's room we can't enter. But Kara knows that it's us. Let's see if we can get her attention. Just a, excuse me, just a shabby boy. But Kara knows that it's us. And she's going to tease this guy with blackmail. Folks, nothing better than solving your problems with blackmail. Especially like kind of white lie, easygoing blackmail. Let's not 
be digging up some real dirt here. Okay, so that's enough to convince him that we are of friend friendly kin. So here's some more dialogue. Um, apparently, Kara is in danger of some sort, and she wants to let us know that the king is not who we think that he is. But she's under house castle arrest, I guess, and there was a famous hunter that's being hired, so clearly something's afoot. Oh no. But uh, Kara, that uh, that doesn't seem to be swaying too many people's opinions. She is not feeling too uh, too happy here and wants our help, but unfortunately there's not really anything we can do right now. But do you think that maybe Kara wants to see our sweet flute tricks? Okay, bye. That's all we got for now. We'll go see the king ourselves and maybe we can talk some sense into him. Seems like he's being a little, uh, a little ridiculous. And of course, why wouldn't he want to listen to a commoner who has a very important treasure that he specifically wants? So as you can see, this area is opened up now. We can go see the king himself and all of his palatial regalia. Breakfast has concluded. He has finished his blueberry muffins. And now we can make audience with the king and queen. Let's see what the queen has to say first. Okay, he wants nothing to do with us. Instead, the king. Oh man, everybody here is so judgmental. They're just peanut butter and jealous of how amazing we are and our incredible flute skills. But did we bring the crystal, crystal ring? You bet we did. But why should we give it to this guy? Like it's ours. He did it. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, well, we thought we had the ring. I guess we don't. And uh, now apparently we're being thrown into a dungeon. And calling the queen ma'am was the worst thing we could have possibly done besides not bringing that ring. So now we are in Edward's prison. This game really weirded me out as a little kid, and I played through this part so many times because I could just never get past to how creepy it made me feel. But we're going to finish this bad boy now. We're all adults. Time to put on our big boy bridges. <laughs> and now Will is getting a little melodramatic. Why do I have to suffer? First, he loses his dad. Then he has to eat snail pie. And now he's locked in a dungeon for not bringing jewelry to the king. What a world. But yeah, getting getting out of here would be nice. Um, this dungeon looks very dungeon-esque. Doesn't appear that we're going to be getting out of here too easily, though. Unfortunately. If only there was something we could do. Hmm. This is a part in the game, too. When I was a little kid, I just couldn't figure it out. I just had no clue what to do. And you'll just have to kind of sit here for a moment and you'll be thinking like, okay, like what, what's going on? Like the door is locked. Clearly there is nothing you can really interact with except first we eat flute skills. Whenever you get bored, just kind of helicopter your flute around. But, uh, we get a ration of bread. Hopefully it's sourdough. It's the worst thing he's ever tasted, probably from Subway. Okay. And, you know, whenever you get lonely, sometimes you just have to miss grandma's snail pie. So I guess that that uh, pie was actually something he did enjoy. I was making fun of it the entire time, and here we are. Yeah, we got a little bit of bread, so we're feeling a little bit better. This is just more of a time duration thing. You can't really do anything about it. But now Will is is getting his feels, a little bit of empathy coming out of the way. And uh, he's just going to fall asleep, as you do on the floor of a cold, dark dungeon. Uh-oh. So Will must have been playing with his flute to help himself sleep. And in doing so, we meet our father. Yeah, so this is kind of the uh, sort of a gimmick is that the flute somehow is like the embodied spirit of your dad. 
Which is weird, but you know. I'm inside you, Will. You can't tell us though, because that would be convenient and make this game way less confusing. Do we want to listen? No, you deserted me. Oh, okay, so now he leaves and then we have to go find him. He steps out for cigarettes and milk and then we have to go be the one to rescue him. That seems a little backwards. I don't think so. But thankfully, our dad has given us a little bit of a hint here. If you use your flute, you can collect these gems. He's like, is that good enough? You know, I paid my bus fare. Can you come get me now? I don't know how any of this is connected, but uh, yeah, Grandpa Bill apparently is in the know about what's going on. He knows some secrets and, uh, you know, far from it to the, for our dad to be like, hey, come save me. And then I'm going to tell you about these horrible things that you're going to have to endure to come save me because I am a doofus. So there you go. Every time you defeat an enemy, you'll get some of those gems and we have to go and find some mystic statues. It would be really cool if the game didn't just kind of dump this on you, but you know, it is what it is. And our first step will be the Incan Ruins eventually in a hot minute. It's going to be quite a while before we do that. So don't get your hopes up for any sort of crazy ruin exploration. Instead, a visit from Hamlet. Oh yeah. Kara comes in the clutch with the letter and a key. So if this was only the way to kind of soothe the soul for anybody that is incarcerated, sorry to hear that you're in prison. Here's a letter. But, uh, oh no, not this. The kind of people that lived in their mansions during the, uh, the 2020 year and were singing, we are the world prisoners of silk and gold. There it is. But, uh, this is Kara's way of helping us out. Ta-da! We have the key! Thanks, Kara. So, Kara and Hamlet coming in clutch. We can now... Uh, how do I use it? Is it... Hold on. Do I have to equip this? That is dumb. Okay. So, we're free! All right. And here's a dark space. If you want to go and hang out with Gaia for a little bit. There's a whole lot of nothing you can do in there except for saving right now. Not really anything you need to do. But uh, yeah, the rest of this time spent will be uh, doing a dungeon. So how about that, ladies and gents? I'm going to check here real quick. And this is the first dungeon of the game. So how do I? OK, I forgot the buttons. So we'll go ahead and explain a little bit. As you can see, these are bats. I don't know if you knew that. You can attack with your flute. That is your gonna be main attacking device. We now have four and a half HPs and Will will tell us that every time you defeat all the enemies, you do get a gem, so that's that correct. When you defeat enemies in this game, you get these little crystals, which I believe if you get 100, it gives you a bonus life, which we don't have any of yet. Get a life will, but yeah. There isn't really, unfortunately, a ton that you can do in this early part of the game. It's very much, especially in a dungeon like this, it's very much a hack and slash. There isn't anything unique about it. You don't have powers. You don't have any sort of cool ability to do anything. You just have to kill stuff by hitting it a lot with your flute. So there's that. There's also gonna be stuff that's gonna pop out of the ground. If you can't reach a crystal because it's in the ground or it's in the water, you can use your flute to drag it towards using your psychic powers. That's how you do that. All right, we got another creepy eyeball. Oh, excuse you. Definitely going to try not to die in the first dungeon of the game. That'd be incredibly embarrassing. These eyeballs do have the highest HP of this area. I think they have five. Or no, that's not true. It'd be those skeletons. Those definitely had closer to seven or eight. We we whacked that bad boy a lot. But yeah, I think that you can do like a jump attack. I don't know if that does more. Oh, it does. Okay, so that's smart. I lied. Okay, so clearly I am very good at this game. I've already lied within the first two episodes. You can do a jump attack, which appears to do two damage. 
Ooh. But our strength has been increased. It's very kind. I was afraid for a second I was going to fall in that water. That would have been horrible. But yes, this is your intro. Edward's Castle Dungeon. We're now doing two damage per hit, which is great. You can see the enemy's HP on the top right where it says enemy. This has the same shape as the statue from Seaside Cave. And notice this little, uh, little wisp that's kind of hanging out with us. That couldn't mean anything, right? But yeah, there you go. So you can do the little jump attack when you run at enemies. It's great that the game communicates that to you and tells you they don't. Fun. Ooh, how will we ever, uh, how will we ever fix this puzzle? Come here or the demon will get us. What demon? There's no demons in the dungeons of a castle. That's a safe space for all. All right, so we've got the ability now to, oh boy, did I screw this up? How do I get, hold on. Whoop. Apparently you have to be parallel to the item to get it. This game is about a uh, geometry simulator, very fun. There's another, another enemy here. You're gonna wanna make sure you kill every enemy. If you don't, then most of the time the room will not unlock for you and you also won't get the item, whatever the prescribed one is. It's gonna be HP or uh, health something along those lines. But if you hit that switch, it puts these things in motion. It changes the dynamic of the room so we can get this nice big chest. Oh yeah, we found an herb. Let's see how many we have, two, and a red gem. So we're doing okay. I think those herbs heal, it says restore strength. That's not true. It restores your HP. I'm not right. I'm not really sure why it says that, but anyway, I did not translate this game. So that's fine, or localize it technically. For some reason, I have a lot of trouble remembering that that's a word. Whenever I'm referring to games, I'm like, oh yeah, what's it called when you make it not sound so dumb for Americans? Oh, localizing, oh, okay, that's it. All right, so we got a couple more of these water wieners to deal with, one more skeleton, and a defense upgrade. I don't think that the game is as generous in the future with upgrades as they are here. So it's really nice that they do give you that. Let's take a moment to enjoy these cool water graphics. Pretty nice. Move forward. And I don't know if there's a specific amount of HP slash crystals slash things you should have at this point in the game. So I'm not going to pretend like I know that. I'm just gonna play it as such. Oof, I need to stop taking damages. Don't want to be using my herbs too early, you know what I'm saying? That's what I like to maybe have to relax at night before bed. Got some falling javelin spear traps, which don't really look like they fit in like the aesthetics of this game. I mean, the artwork of this game is really nice, really good art style. But uh, some of this, as you'll see eventually, it doesn't really, oops. It doesn't really look like it fits, so I don't know. I need to stop being picky about a game that's like 15 years old by now. Oh, that's what she said. Er. All right, so there's a rusty switch. I don't know if we can hit it. No, we'll need to find another way to hit that switch. Whatever could this puzzle be, viewers? What do you think? It's a pretty tough one. All right, we actually are taking a lot of damage, so I need to be careful here. Maybe if we jump on it, boop, there it is. I don't know if there was anything else up here. There is. Hold on really quick. There's a lot of bats. There's a there's a super bat. Ooh, these guys are going really fast, too. Whoa. I'm just going to use one of my herbs, too, because... How do I do this? How do I use herb? Equip. B button to use. Yes. Yeah. Being a little reckless with my playing, and I would prefer not to die in the... Uh, oops in the first dungeon of the game. It's kind of embarrassing. That's one of the things I remember when I played this game that uh, when I was playing it and I um, was doing this dungeon, it, it definitely weirded me out big time. So when I, oh, okay, I guess, it, I mean, I would have probably died in the process, but let's go back really quick and check out this room that we opened up. Looks like there might be a spirit there. A red jewel, don't forget to get this one. Okay, what do you have to say for yourself? Okay, yeah, so that's basically just the game. This is the 
continue system. When you get 100 of the gem, crystal, orb, orb things, then you get a, uh, a life up for every hundo. Okay, that does nothing. Slapping that button. Ooh, nice little flower here. Nice little sign of life. Try playing the flute. Why is that flower talking to us? Play the melody, it says. Okay, if you insist. There we go. We are a pro flautist. I like that the flute is purple too. Nice purple. Flute. Mushroom on the end. Anyway, um, yeah, this is great. Nice performance. Okay, and now we are being tele, 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 I can't even talk. We're being telepathically connected. And the game, this is really annoying. You do have to actually hit it when it tells you to. No cheating. Oops. You have to do it like as the, as it pops up. I think it's a little preemptive actually. Ta-da! Actually, I did it a little bit early. I did it two and a half, so suck on that. Voice in the wall. You weird flower. Flowers can't talk. Oop, okay. Be a little bit more proactive here and not just taking a buttload of damage at all times. In games like this, it's really, oops, it's really tough not to just like really whip your way through these areas. It is, you know, like I said, Every dungeon until you get some power-ups is going to be just like this. That's probably maybe one of the knocks on this game that some people might have negative things to say. Is that when it comes to dungeons, uh, Illusion of Gaia, unfortunately, is not very... Um, there's not a lot of diversity in what they ask you to do. So that's a bit of a bummer, but, you know, it's still fun. The boss fights are really creative and... Oh, I guess I can hit those when they're going down. The boss fights are pretty creative and the characters are, I mean, it's, it's it's a, it's an early Enix game. So of course everything is going to be kind of weird and that's just what you can expect. But one of the new things about the dark space here that you'll notice, you can also heal yourself with every one of those if you need it. But uh, yeah, this is our first experience with one of the two power up characters in the game. Frieden. The eternal so there you go maybe you had too many herbs we're losing consciousness when you do this you can assume the form of the hero freedom or Fredan. i'm gonna say freedom because i'm not stupid so there you go he's a mythical knight it doesn't there's nothing in the game that explains how this works so yeah that's it What's nice about Frieden is he has an extended reach. He's obviously stronger than Will is with his wimpy little boy flute. So as you can see now, we're doing more damage than we were doing before. Not a ton more, but it is what it is. And eventually you will get some cool power-ups. Here's the second version of the skeleton. Very annoying. You can kind of kite it around though. And even when you take out its body, its head's still there. Very annoying, but yeah. This game somehow found a way to take an action RPG and make it about as linear as possible, like even more linear than like Zelda of, you know, you got eight dungeons, you follow them around in a certain pattern, you gather things like a fetch quest in a certain way. This is definitely way more linear than that. It doesn't make it not fun. I think this game is still very fun, but um, yeah, I don't know. I played this a lot when I was a kid, like I mentioned. I didn't have much success at it. I've never beaten it, technically. Which is actually a bit of a theme that I've noticed on my uh, Super Nintendo Sundays games is... I think, um... There's another red jewel. Make sure you grab that. And, uh... Yeah, I actually haven't beaten most of the games that I've played, which I think is... I don't know if that's good or bad. You know, I'd never beaten Aladdin, I'd never beaten Mega Man X. I had beaten Donkey Kong Country, which... I will say, large part this time around, thanks to Odin, because he's the man, but um, yeah, beyond that, I haven't really beaten a lot of these games, and 
this will be um this will be another one that I've never actually beaten all the way, so we will see. But yeah, we have concluded the dungeon, so Frieden will disappear. I think, I feel like there is a, is there not a, a gem in here? How many do we have? Oh, there it is. I knew it. I knew it. All right. So I want to say that's all of them. I think there's four, four jewels in the, oh, who's this? Excuse me? She saw, us, she, saw, eh, she saw us changing. We saw her changing. Okay. So she's Lily. She's an Itori, Itori, flower spirit. So apparently there's some sort of connection with Grandma Lola's music and this village. And somehow Lily has had some of Grandma's pie. A little suggestive, but yeah. Stop eating Grandma's unusual pie, Lily. It's kind of weird. And... Thankfully, though, Grandma had sent Lily to save us. So there's some sort of a some sort of a dynamic here that's not really discussed yet. But uh, yeah, so Lily is a bit of a plot device. She's this little uh, little flower spirit wisp thing that's going to pop back in and out from time to time. But she did save us this time, which is very kind of her. Thank you, Lily for not letting us die a horrible death in this dungeon. Also, take a look at what the floor does when I run. Apologize for those of you that have like motion sickness, but yeah, this is this is weird. Ugh. And that makes my brain hurt. But yeah, that's a successful clearing of the dungeon. Let's see if Kara is still around. Kara, hello? There you are. Old Snorehead. Oh, got him. Ha, ah, what a good one. Hopefully you didn't think she was talking about her. We're not calling you a pig, Kara, I promise. But thanks to Hamlet, thanks to Kara. We have saved the day. And next time, we will uh, escort Kara out of the dungeon and um, to safety somewhere. I'm trying to get this so that way we're both facing the same way. How do I... Hold on. Anyway... Close enough. All right. So thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Super Nintendo Sunday's Illusion of Guy. I am D Mike, and I will see you next time. Bye.